Coming up on the Football Today podcast, Kevin De Bruyne has returned and has sounded an ominous warning to the rest of the EPL. Myself, the stats guy, and Marcus break it all down. We take a look at Australia's opening game in the Asian Cup, as well as who is the bell end of this week and who scored the goal of the week. It's all coming up right now on Football Today. Hello and welcome to the Football Today podcast. It is January 16th. I seem to have missed the memo. I came into the office today expecting to do some work, but the two chuckleheads, Lee McCallion and Marcus Barzano, are like, you know what, Alex? You went away last week to the Gold Coast, so stuff you. We're going to stay at home this week. Lads, how are we doing? Going really well. Going very well. Got my uh, very Amsterdam themed here with Rotterdam and Ajax, but yeah, going well. Yeah, I had to, I had to stay away from you, but we still got the, still got to do the pods. So that's all good. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was just payback for, for you not coming along to watch the cricket last night. I reckon. Yeah. Bit of I was away. I was away for a week. The last thing I wanted to do was go outside again. <laughs> I wanted to sit at home for a couple of hours and actually like relax. Be like. I have actual stuff to do tomorrow, but we are here for the Football Today podcast. We're here to wrap up the weekend that was in the EPL, uh, the Asian Cup, the African Cup of Nations, and everything else that's going on in the world of football right now. But usually, as we, oh, as always, we do here on the EPL show, we start off with a yeah, nah, and Marcus is coming in with this week's yeah, nah. Well, I Ooh. certainly am, and I think it's very well-themed based off what's happened on the weekend um, with Kevin De Bruyne's return. But yeah, nah, boys. Kevin De Bruyne is the best Premier League midfielder of all time. Oh, all time. I've been thinking about this since I saw you put it in the run sheet. So you got Scolzi, uh, I feel like he's up there. You got Lampard, probably my favorite player of all time, being a Chelsea fan. I think Stevie Scholes, G. Stevie, Stevie G. G. I'd probably put Scholes or Lampard as my number one. But De Bruyne, by the time he finishes his career, he's not far off, is he? he probably one of the best. He's probably the best passer. Uh, passing oh, midfielder. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna keep it central midfield. So no gigs, no like wide midfielders. Yep. Purely Cam, CM, CDM. Yep. What do you reckon, Alex? I'm gonna go yeah, because Ooh. his resume says it all. He has literally won everything. I know it's obviously it, you have gotta look at this as well as trophies like Stevie G, probably one of the best of all time. Didn't win it well, he won a Champions League, but didn't win a Premier League. De Bruyne countless Premier Leagues, Champions League, FA Cups, everything else. So uh, after that performance on the weekend, um, it's yes, it's recency bias, but also when you think about it and go look at since he joined Manchester City, what, six or seven years ago since then, basically he's been the glue that's helped them win all of these titles. Hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, like I said before, I'm going to lean towards him being in the top three behind Scolzi and Lampard. But if you ask me this question if we're still doing this ball, when we're still doing this podcast, then maybe a year's time. I reckon I probably could put him one, uh, Marcus, but oh, it's just tough putting a current player. That recency bias, I feel like he's an absolute legend and he already is. He's got five Premier Leagues I had a look before. Uh, but yeah, I feel like Scolzi and Lampard, uh, I think just, just pip him at the moment. What about, what about your own? Uh, yeah, no, Marcus, what do you reckon? Um, oh, it's, it's really, it's really close at the moment. I think I have to wait till the end of his career, but I reckon he's on par with, with skulls at the moment. i would probably yep. have him and skulls as, as the best, probably even, even as a Chelsea fan, I'm going to go maybe Gerard ahead of Lampard possibly. Yep. Um, but he's up there. Definitely. Mm. This just makes me sad about thinking I saw a confirmation this morning of like uh, gun English midfielders and they went through, <laughs> there was like a Frank Lampard, a Stevie G and then, then Jack Wilshire came on. I'm like, Ah, he didn't get injured. How good he could have been, not just for Arsenal, but for England. Poor his, yeah. his, his complimentation was elite. <laughs> we, yeah. need to, we need to say that word right, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just whatever. Anyway, uh, apparently some FIFA awards happened over the night, and I really usually don't care about many of these awards, but I do want to complain that Lionel Messi has won the best men's player of the year, 2023, ahead of Mbappe and Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland came to the English Premier League for the first time at, what, he's 22, 23 years old. He broke the goal-scoring record and won yeah. the friggin' treble. <laughs> Messi, yeah, he, yes, they won a World Cup. Okay, that's one month out of the year. Haaland dominated for 12 months. He was a better player than Messi in 2023. Was the World Cup actually... The year before? No, like it was that? in 2022. Uh, so. Yeah, so does that count towards yeah, this award? 22, yeah, 22 23 season, I, I, okay. I'd be thinking. Oh, yeah. I, I'm still leaning towards Messi. He had one of the best uh, yeah, World Cups of all time. Okay, and he had, had his a age. good month. But, and I think the World Cup just 
if you do something amazing in the World Cup, it gives you a few extra brownie points in these sort of awards. Oh, I, yeah, I, it is tough not to pick Haaland, but I'd still be picking Messi just. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of it is more storyline storyline based, yeah. uh, which is a, yeah. a bit concerning. He ended up equal points with Haaland, actually. They both had 48 points for the best oh. men's player, but Messi had more first choice nominations, which meant he won. So, a bit lucky. Uh, Haaland pretty stiff. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Edison won the best goalkeeper. You'd just say that's him or Allison every year. You've got no real complaints there. But if he's won the best goalkeeper of the year, how come in the world 11 for the year, uh, Courtois is the goalkeeper? That made no sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It doesn't well, make much sense, does it? Yeah, that's what I was looking at that world 11, which we'll talk about in a bit. There's some, I think there's some iffy calls in there, especially when oh. other people are winning the award. I feel like surely if you win the award... You're in the take. What is, what's yeah. going on? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and with that, Pep wins the best men's coach of 2023. Fair. Won the treble. Can't really knock that. Uh, for the women's, before we get on this men's team, Sam Kerr is in the women's world 11. Hell I yeah. felt that the Spanish, uh, the Spanish women were a bit undersold here with only two players in that world 11. Yeah. They did win the World Cup after all. So I feel like they were exceptionally stiff to only have two players in the world 11. And then you could also say, you have a look at a player like Caitlin Ford who didn't get a mention in there. She was fantastic throughout the season, not just for Australia, but for Arsenal. So, I don't know. Maybe it's a very English biased thing, that uh, World mm. 11 squad. Yeah. There, there was a lot of English players in there, wasn't there, for the, for the women's? Yeah, it did, did work for fall with transfers and, and things like that. It's just a lot of English bias in both the men's and women's. So, yeah, you're right. I think yeah. there was so many underrated yeah, Spanish players in that Women's World Cup. Yeah, to the men's 11. Well, I'll just run through it quickly. Uh, so, you've got uh, Courtois as your goalie. Kyle Walker, John Stones, Ruben Diaz, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Jude Bellingham, Messi, Haaland, Mbappe, and Vinicius Jr. The one that I'm going to complain about here is John Stones. Why is he in the team? There is many, many better center backs throughout the year than him. I feel like he's a bit lucky to get in there. And even Kyle Walker, they've just literally picked a back three from Manchester City. But Virgil van Dijk and William Saliba, I feel, are a little stiff not to be in there from a Premier League point of view. I can't really talk about much of the other leagues because, I'll be honest, I don't watch too many of them. But you think a player like Alfonso Davies as well yep. could have uh, potentially got a mention for Bayern Munich. But it's literally just Manchester City and the rest of the dudes. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's way too much bias towards City. I think a little bit of bias around they did the win the treble. They did win the treble, but that it seems like a way too many players. When you've got the whole world uh, to uh, go by, I think Vin- Vinicius Jr. as well. I'm not sure about if I would have him in my side. I think he's really oh, good. Well, but I'd have him. Well, yeah, you'd have him? Or, yeah, yeah, I'd have yeah. him too. So that's guy. I feel like his stats uh, – I'm, I'm just probably yeah, going off the stats like I like to do, but I don't. No, I wouldn't have him in my side. I feel like he's a bit uh, flashy player that, yeah, he's still a freak, but I don't think I would have him in the best 11. I feel like they've done a very average job of this, this 11. You get to take out one player and replace them with someone. Who's your one player that you're taking out of cool. and who you're replacing them with? I don't mind your, your uh, Van Dyke call. Stones out for Van Dyke because I feel like... Well, I'm, I'm Stones for yeah. Saliba, obviously, but yeah. Saliba, yeah. Who would you go, Mark? So, I'm, I'm not sure, actually, who I'd bring in. Um, I'd probably take... I'd probably take John Stones out of that. I think there's a lot of English bias with, with John Stones. Yeah. I mean, and even Bernardo Silva. He gets rotated a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. But he's a, he's a quality player. He's one of the best in the world, and he probably is the best in the world technically, probably behind Messi. But minutes-wise, possibly take him out. But then you're looking at midfield-wise, who oh, do you bring in? Uh, i got actually a, a bit of a shout. Uh, Rodri. I forgot about Rodri. I'd probably take him yeah. over. Uh, Replacing Stones. the City player with a City player. It is a City player, but the if you're going to have, uh, what is it, five City players, I think you've got to have Rodri. Well, Rodri's in their top five players. Six. Six. Is it is there a is there a bit of recency bias? I'm just throwing it out there for for Jude Bellingham since his move to Real Madrid. Um, no, because his, his World Cup was ridiculous. So mm. they did that have an easy run though. Ago. They had a, they had a very easy run in that World Cup until they faced France, mm. which they which they bombed out of. Yeah, no, I think at his age as well, just performing on the World Cup, I don't really care who they were playing. You, just to perform for England like that, the way he was doing, I'm, I'm happy to put him in there. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, when we start off with the EPL, we always start off with Ange Ball status. Of course, Ange Postacoglu at the yes. helm at Tottenham. I can't believe you just gave a fist pump stats guy. You're a Chelsea fan. That's sort of sacrilegious. I'm uh, more of Ange- an Ange fan than a Chelsea fan. Just, oh, uh, yeah. well. I've said that before. Well, I've said that before. That's... That's not uh, right. Whoever clips this up, Leo or Gerald, uh, please clip this up and put that on social media. That stats guy goes for the manager more than his team. And of I course, cross-town in London. 
I wouldn't mind if. Uh, no, yeah, no, don't try and backtrack. <laughs> no, Stats guy, don't try and backtrack. You have made your bed, and now you will lie in it as we That's bury. Right. I just support the Australians, unlike uh, some other people. That's okay. Yes, I support my team. <laughs> anyway, Ange Ball status better than Manchester United, but still not that great. Yeah, but they definitely had chances to win that game. It's just obviously the way Ange plays defensively, you're going to get caught out. Yeah. And um, yeah. Pal thought Pedro Porro was fantastic in attack, but both of the both of his uh, Tottenham <laughs> yes. goals conceded came yeah. down his side. Um, so there's a bit of you got to know you got to get a bit of yin yang in there um, yeah. with the way it's playing. Will they win some trophies with the way that Ange is playing? Do they need to nope. be more defensively stable in the in the bigger leagues, bigger tournaments of the world? Probably. Um, well, what, they're they only made, in the FA Cup, aren't they? So they, yeah. they've they've made some good signings, though. I think defensively, Drew Grusin coming in, um, yeah, he looks like a real beast. Yeah, well, Werner got got an assist as well, so that's that was actually pretty surprising that he had an instant impact. Yeah, I, it is worrying when uh, Manu. I think it was only two shots on target, and they had two goals. So when you give them some easy chances like that, especially when Tottenham were probably the better side. They probably just need to be just five percent more defensive, and they could have won that game two one rather than their yeah all their fullbacks running up. It is how Ange plays; he's never going to change. He's done that for his whole career, so it'll just be interesting to see if they can yeah hold on with this type of tactic. It was more an indictment on Manchester United that a Tottenham missing James Madison, Song, and a host yeah. of others through injury and suspension that they got dominated by Tottenham at home. It was more an indictment on that. Sure. Uh, so. You'd think that Tottenham, once everyone comes back, should be able to make a run. Uh, but yeah, it's I hate talking about Tottenham in a glowing fashion because as an Arsenal fan, it just feels gross. Anyway, yeah. time for On the Spot. Of course, this is the performance of the week at the Timmy Cahill Boxing a Flag Award for who's hot in the EPL. And this is the first time and probably only time this season, given that there was only five games in the EPL last weekend, we have come to the same consensus as to who's hot in the EPL. Kevin De Bruyne. Oh. Yeah, KDB. I, I put him in first. I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting on him. Coming, in, coming on just for 21 minutes, goal and an assist. Man, um, did he end up getting man of the match? He got definitely got the most points, the bonus points in uh, yeah. Fantasy Premier League. Uh, I brought him into my Fantasy Premier League team, and I was a bit annoyed that he didn't start, and then he absolutely dominated. Goal and assist in 21 minutes, and as Marcus mentioned, arguably one of the best uh, midfielders of all time in the Premier League. Mm. Oh, just it's ridiculous, isn't it? Like he's he's come off the Crazy. bench. His match sharpness wouldn't have been great. He's played. He came off the bench in the FA Cup. Yeah, he's come off the bench here, and then he plays that pass. Look, wow, to to win them the game um, at Sam James's Park. He's a freak of nature, isn't he? He's awesome. He literally came on for 21 minutes and took the absolute piss, and everyone just <laughs> like when he came on, like, oh yeah, City gonna win. Yeah. Great, great, yeah, awesome. It- there was the they were going through the uh, the commentators were going through it. You just give him sort of two seconds of space in that midfield. His eyes dart everywhere, and he can find the pass. You're, you're just going to be right up up on him. I'd put two CDMs on him at every every chance you get. I know that's really hard to do uh, in the Premier League because the ball's pinging around so fast. But you cannot give him any space. Sort of like a point guard in basketball. He just sort of darts around, can do the no look passes and things like that. Uh, uh, all game awesome. New Newcastle were giving them that space, even when it was Phil Foden in that position anyway. So it wasn't just a KDB thing. It was. That True. was Eddie Howe's game plan, and mm. it worked for 89 and a half minutes. Yeah. Unfortunately yeah, yeah. For they, were, they were in the game based off a bunch of individual brilliance, which we'll get mm. to in our goal of the week. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the opposite of the performance of the week is the bell end of the week as to who is not hot in the EPL. Stats guy, you go first. Uh, I'm sick of talking about him. I feel like we talked about him uh, in one of the early episodes, but Anthony... What is he doing? He's got zero goal contributions in 22 games across all competitions. I was scrolling through all the competitions. I'm like, surely he's got one in the Champions. No, he hasn't got a goal or assist. Uh, and then Werner, it's just, it's just funny that Werner's played one game for Spurs uh, and he's probably people were a bit worried about that one. He's got an assist from his first game. So he's already got more goal contributions than Anthony. Uh, I just He's just really off and they paid a lot. What did they end up paying for him? 100 million. Uh, 100 million. That's what it was. I just wanted to double check. Yeah, 100 million. That's going to be one of the worst signings of all time. Anthony just needs to uh, pull his finger out. What is he doing? <laughs> it honestly still shits me that he scored a goal in his debut for Manchester United against yeah. Arsenal and he's done like <laughs> nothing since. It's just absolute brutal. Yeah. Oh, I, I've missed this in the run sheet, but you know, I'm going to go the ladder of what stats guy just said. I'm going to go Timo Werner as bell end of the week purely oh. because he's moved to Tottenham and uh, he's got an assist already. Uh, I loved him at Chelsea. I didn't want him to leave. But seeing him in the in the white of uh, Spurs is bittersweet. Yeah. Uh, for me, my bell end is Anana. He left uh, 
England on straight after the game at Old Trafford the other night to make the what is it the Cameroon game in the African Cup of Nations. I think he ended up making it, but he was stranded at one point uh, about 150 miles away because there were some technical difficulties in fog, and they had to get into the into a car to get him to that game uh, to play in the opening game of the Cup of Nations. So I'm just checking up right now if he actually made it in the end because it was touch and go there. Wow. Um, if he was going to make it. Uh, he was left out of the squad for their opener after a nightmare journey to the Ivory Coast. So there you go. <laughs> Bell end of the week. Not leaving your club when you've been picked to play for your country because you're so scared of losing your spot at your club because you are <laughs> rooted to the goal line and don't even try to make a save. Come on. <laughs> he does That's just stand guy. there a lot. He, like a he literally just stands there and goes, ugh. <laughs> God, I hope I save this. And then the ball just rolls past him every time. It was yeah. just pathetic. Anyway, speaking of the opposite of what Anada does, goals. Goal of the week, stats guy, go. Uh, Anthony Gordon. I know that Newcastle lost this one, but their opening two goals uh, for uh, Newcastle were, were absolutely awesome. So the only two goals, they were absolutely awesome. Gordon, finesse finish, just that R1 uh, circle in FIFA if you want to do that. Oh, yeah, EAFC now. Centimetre perfect, as uh, Dennis would have said. Uh, just straight around uh, two defenders, and I thought it was absolutely awesome. Just cut inside. He's having such a good uh, season and season and a half. Uh, it's been an awesome signing for Newcastle. Just too bad a few of their other players uh, didn't step up and they choked in the end. I'm going to go a fellow uh, Newcastle player, actually. I'll go Alexander Izak for yeah. this goal. He had a lot of work to do. And for such a big man, how good is he technically? Mm. He's, he's, he's so good. He's one of the best strikers in the league. Um, and he was just very smart how he waited for the overlap sort of to, to get Kyle Walker sort of second guessing to create that space. And similar to Gordon, um, just finessed it into the far post. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and quick, quick side note, Cameroon drew with Guinea this morning. Um, so... Not Ooh. great there for Cameroon drawing with Guinea in the African Cup of Nations. Uh, my goal of the week was Kevin De Bruyne, literally just passing it into the net from 25 yards. Absolute <laughs> beautiful goal to watch. I've seen him do that way too many times for Manchester City against Arsenal. He had half an inch, he took it and scored. And it was just, okay, he's back. Everyone else in the EPL is in a lot of trouble right now because this is the time where Manchester City win 19 straight games. And we're just oh. like, oh, again. Oh. How, how, how nuts is it? Like, they're only two points off top and they haven't had De Bruyne or Haaland and now they're, they're yeah. coming back. And yeah. it just shows how ridiculous their squad is. They had yeah. a bit of a blip as well. Uh, when, yeah, what was it they lost to Brentford, was it? Or uh, I can't remember who it was. Oh, no, that was last. Wolves, yeah. Yeah, they had that blip and everyone's like, oh, are they, are they dropped off? No, you can never you can never count them out. Pep's coaching. You got They've got such a freak squad. So, yeah, you can never count them out. It's not as if they've got 115 charges sitting over their head for yeah. financial fair play, but you know, that's it's all right. We'll just we'll, we'll just go after Nottingham Forest and Everton, not the guys that have literally Minos. cheated. I, I was going to say we should probably touch on that how uh, Notts and Everton are, are, are like uh, financial breaches and yeah. base points deductions. They've confirmed that they did breach. So yeah. interesting to see what happens there with Everton already being docked ten points. <laughs> Well, so Nottingham like Forest's argument is that because the the period ended on July 30th and they got ahead of it by selling Brennan Johnson. The problem is they didn't sell Brennan Johnson until the last day of the transfer window. And they're going to argue that because it was within the transfer window, it should count. But it's going to be like uh, the APL or whoever it is will state you had till the end of July to do this. By waiting that extra month, you've actually gone past it. It's black and white. You've gone over, unfortunately. Yes, you've made this player sale, but you've gone over the allotment that you're allowed to lose. So therefore, they're going to get punished. It'll probably be 10 points. Everton will probably cop another 10 points. But the fact that these are just one or two charges and the points deductions or whatever the penalties are will be decided by, I had a look at this one, it's the end of May. So basically a week after the season is the deadline. They'll obviously make the decision before that. But it's these are just one or two charges, whereas Manchester City have 115 against them which is why it got announced this time last year around Christmas in 2022. That's why it's taking so long. There's 115 individual charges. And the same for Chelsea. Let's not forget Chelsea. There is, they are looking into, I think it's 40 or 50 different charges as well. I think we, we actually we got cleared. They, they checked us with Everton and Nottingham Forest just for these financial breaches over that period. Yeah. Uh, the sustainability so this is back breaches. to the Abra, uh, Abramovich. Yeah. Abra, Abramovich, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So, yeah, they, a lot of watch this space. It, it does seem – it's hard to ignore that it's Everton and Notts that are getting go- – that, yeah. that is who are the clubs that have been going after when Manchester City are just about to win their fifth title in six years and everyone's just like, cool. It, yeah. it doesn't seem right, but, you know. 
Look, I know I'm saying this as a Chelsea fan, and it's probably I'm probably going to cop in the comments or something. It's a bit biased, but do you think it's a bit of a harsh penalty to to be docked points for a current season when you know maybe these financial breaches happened in previous ownerships? It ha- it's happened a decade, fifteen years ago. Is there a different punishment that you can do? Nope, uh, you still cheated. Yeah, I, I I'll agree with that one, Alex. I think. Even no matter when it is, you, there's a lot of things you could do. You could get rid of money of clubs, but then what do these big clubs have? Unlimited amount of money, yeah. uh, things like that. I feel like if you were going to some other leagues, you could yeah dock them yeah different salary caps or things like that. But it's not well, really going to affect Chelsea that much. Whereas if you were to do dock points of Man City or Chelsea, that would have actually affected and kicked them up the ass a little bit more. Yeah, and you also look like you've had it here in the AFL where Carlton got done for salary cap breaches. It cost them. 15 years of basically having any hope of being a good football side. You have a look, what was it? Juventus and one of the Milans in the Serie A copped it for attempted match fixing and bribing of referees. So, Mm. yeah, yeah, I'm all for it. Juventus got relegated uh, yeah. in the in the thousands. So, yeah, yeah. It, is it, it could have maybe possibly even I know this is pretty limited, but a transfer ban for two or three windows that would would that do anything or I'm not sure. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we we'll have to have a think about it. I'm not, I'm not too sure to be. You honest. know, you've got no because the transfer ban also doesn't do anything. It's it's for this sort of thing where the precedent's been set. It's a points docking or a relegation. It's one or the other, depending on how. Uh, Egregious the, egregious the breaches are. But anyway, let's move on for that. Uh, we've got to quickly talk about the other games of the weekend. Uh, quick drop points about the other. Burnley-Luton ended in a one-all draw. This ended in controversy with Burnley, uh, sorry, Luton scoring the equaliser. Basically, it was mm. one of the last kicks of the game. And I think everyone thought VR would intervene on the goal and be like, yep, foul on the goalie. For some reason, VAR went, no, nah, it's cool. It's Burnley and Luton. No one's going to care. Yeah. Was, that was it's- a joke, wasn't it? Really, it's, like, a that's, it's a foul every day of the week. I know James Trafford; he's not the best at dealing with set pieces. But he got cleaned up. Looked a, he did get cleaned up, it, as, as well as it. It wasn't even the player going for the ball; it was a player sort of initiating that contact. Yeah. Um, that should have been a, that. I think Burnley got a little bit robbed there. Yeah, agree. Yeah, it, it did seem a bit dodgy, and like you said, Alex. Like, people do care about it. I know it's one, two of the lower teams, but you still got to yeah fix it up. And VAR has been all over the shop. Three points there for Burnley could have been very important, especially with pending potential points losses for Everton and Notts as well later in the season. So watch this space. Uh, Chelsea beat Fulham 1-0. Cole Palmer scored from a penalty. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, Rich Allison has more goals from open play this year than Cole Palmer. And Cole Palmer has more open play goals than Bukayo Saka. So there we go. And Cole Palmer's (laughs) Palmer's a lot, lot younger and he's going to have a much brighter future. (laughs) Is he? Is he a lot younger, stats guy? Oh, I, sh- I feel like he is. <laughs> no, it's just the way he's playing on the pitch in general play is just ridiculous. Unbelievable. Some um, of the flick ons. Yeah. Cole Palmer is one year yeah. younger than Bakaya Saka, stats guy. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I, th- well, I think if you, <laughs> you you look at it like you say, oh, he scored heaps of penalties, but if like I mean, you obviously the fact not that he's burying Chelsea them at games, twenty-one years old. Yeah, yeah. Like the yeah, he's far from five, and he's doing it against the big teams. Did it against Arsenal? Did it against City? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What a player. he is bearing them. Uh, we already talked about Newcastle and Manchester City. Great game. You haven't seen the highlights of that. Make sure you do so. Same with uh, Man United and Spurs. Talked about that. And we'll finish off with Everton nil, Villa nil. Uh, this is more an indictment on Villa's uh, away from uh, away from home form, as we talked about last week. Struggling to win games away from home will cost them the title and potentially Champions League. Everton, handy point. Yeah, they were really solid in uh, defence. You got Pickford. He just pulls out the, every couple of games. He just pulls out an amazing performance. That's why he's the English keeper. He was he was great. Uh, Villa had a, a couple of offside goals, so they were a little bit stiff. But uh, yeah, was, they, Everton did well. They need that. I, I feel like I feel bad for Everton though. They're probably going to lose some more points and ultimately get relegated. But we have, we'll have to wait and see. Hmm. Just so Goodison was a was a tough place to go when mm-hmm. they announced those points deductions. But if they announce yeah. a further ten, it's going to be oh. absolute medlem. Yeah, going to be even point. worse. Uh, for fantasy updates this week, no real updates given we are midway through match week 21. Basically, you haven't got Kevin De Bruyne or any team, even if he's only going to play half an hour for the next six weeks. Just get him in. <laughs> just, just <laughs> after him in. after captain, captaining him last week mistakenly, uh, I still got 24 points from 20 minutes of football, which is unbelievable. Oh, how good is that? Right, before we head off to our ad break, the low light of the show for us three here on Football Today, it is the trivia question with Leo. 
Leo, come on in and make us feel embarrassed for our lack of ball knowledge. <laughs> All right, boys. I think I feel like these are getting easy every week. Uh, so <laughs> ho- hopefully you can uh, you can get this one. Let's go. Uh, which EPL team is first for average possession this season? And I'll give you a bonus point if you can get guess the percentage. Well, oh. okay. I feel like uh, I don't know if that's easy. Is that easy? Let me have a think. Okay. Well, it's got. It's got to be man's. Team. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Chelsea here, and I'm gonna go average possession. Uh, sixty-three. Sixty-three. 63. I'm gonna go Man City sixty. I got no idea though. Oh God. Um. I really hope one of us gets this. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Arsenal with sixty-two. All right. Well, there's no bonus points, but one of you is right. Oh. And that's the stats guy. Yeah, oh, Man City. They yeah. have sixty-four point three percent. Oh, I was only it seems it seems too obvious to back the yeah. City. I thought I was going to say Chelsea. I was maybe going to say Arsenal, and I was like, oh, you got to go Man City. They just dominate, especially the last four weeks. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm happy with that, boys. I'm on the board. Well, they had they had something like seventy odd percent possession last weekend against Newcastle, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that definitely helps mm. to. Was well, it six sixty-four percent is. That's a crazy average. That's, That's too bait, Leo. Too bait. Too bait on the question. <laughs> yeah. I, I said I was making it easy. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. With that being done, well done, Stats Guy. You've got a point. I think that takes Stats Guy to two. That's how good we're going here. Uh, we're <laughs> going to take a quick break. Uh, you're going to hear Stats Guy talk about his other show, Cricket Today. We'll be back after this to talk about all Aussie football adventures. Lock in for a huge summer of slog sixes, rattle bales and classic snags with the daily Cricket Today podcast. Keep up to date with all things BBL, BBL Supercoach, Tests, ODIs and T20s this summer, as well as the highlights and socials all season long. Search Cricket Today on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. All right, boys, welcome back. Welcome back, everyone, to Football Today for the second half of the show. It is all Aussie adventures time, and we're going to start off with the women. Uh, Of course, overseas at the moment in the WSL, we had the FA Cup going on midweek. Mary Fowler scored again for Manchester City as they won quite easily. Mackenzie Arnold actually got an assist for West Ham against Chelsea. Katrina Gorey made her first start for West Ham. She also picked up her first yellow card for West Ham, as is tradition with Katrina Gorey, so good on her. Uh, Charlotte Grant made her debut for Tottenham. Arsenal, a.k.a. Kyra Cooney-Cross, Steph Catley, and Caitlin Ford whipped Watford 5-1. And Emily Van Egmond signed a new deal with Wave FC. I have no idea where that is. I I think it might be San Diego for the 2025 season in America now that her short tenure back in the A-League is finished. And funnily enough, it came out this morning that her dad, I believe, who was also the coach there, he's going to China. Oh, so he's gone. She and literally came out in the last hour. Yeah, uh, San Diego. Oh, breaking you're news right. with, yeah, yeah. with Alex. Breaking news. Uh, <laughs> you're right with San Diego uh, FC, uh, Wave FC. That is San Diego. Yeah. So in the American League, which we talked up before, is one of the best uh, women's leagues in the yeah. world. That's ball knowledge there from Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Take that all your NPCs on Instagram who get into me for my lack of knowledge. I all know my America teams. Anyway, uh, take us through the Asian Cup game over the weekend, guys. We had a 2-0 win to kick off the tournament. Yeah, we sure did. Uh, against India, it probably it wasn't convincing. I watched that game the first half. Yeah. It was pretty horrendous. But you've got to give credit to India with credit's due because they were very stubborn um, in defence. Uh, they were very workmanlike. It was just a great sort of defensive performance and it and it it was a mistake to really to make us go one nil ahead by their keeper. Um, but then once we brought on um, Bruno Fornaroli, Jordan Boss, um, yeah. the game started to switch a little bit, and I think we we, we looked a lot more. Um, oh, I wouldn't say tiki taka because that's not Australian, but th- yeah. the way we we're spreading the the pitch and, and switching the ball was a lot quicker and a, and a lot better. Um, but we got the win, the three points. That's all that matters. Bacchus was excellent in defensive midfield, so. Good signs for Australia. They've got Syria coming up soon. Yeah, I think yep. in these cup games, you just got to get over the line in those ones. We, we probably should have won this probably at least 5-0 or something. The amount of corners we had, I feel like the one thing we need to work on in the yeah, uh, build-up games, the build-up games, we sort of had a lot of corners go to big Harry, and Harry is the clear tallest player in this tournament. He was ahead above everyone from India. Uh, just our crosses to him were horrible. If you get it anywhere near his big hedge, he's going to score. Yeah. So I feel like we just need to work on our corners. And once we... Uh, get those corners set and uh, just score a few goals off and get a bit of confidence up, we can go a long way in the tournament. I feel like that's going to be the difference for our team because we're not, like you said on the other podcast, Marcus, we don't have many match winners for later in the tournament, but on those uh, set pieces and corners, I feel like we can be a real threat. 
Yeah, get Aziz Beach and Martin Boyle off corner duties because the yeah. amount of times that they didn't get past the first man was oh, ridiculous. That was they must very, have been watching Leandro Trossard take corners as of like for <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they might have. Uh, yeah, of note, South Korea easily disposed of Bahrain. They won three uh, one. Son uh, Son Hyung Min picked up a yellow card, uh, but they won that uh, very easily. But uh, Huang Hee Chan wasn't in the squad, and you can say the same for Japan. They won their first game, but no Takahiro, Tommy Asu, or Kubo in the teams. They are fine and fit. They just are not match fit as of yet. So they've been training away from the squad. And because you take 26 players with you, you can only name 23 in your match day squad at the Asian Cup. So, Oh, really? Okay. There's yeah, that. that. Yep. Things you learn. And Egypt, of note for the Mo Salah fans or the Mohamed El Neni fans, uh, they drew with Mozambique and had to rely on a 90th minute penalty from Salah to get that draw. So not the best of starts there for Egypt as every fan other than Liverpool hopes that Egypt make a deep run into the African Cup <laughs> of Nations. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's get across to the transfer portal. Let's have a look at what's going on here. Stats guy, you love Saudi Arabia, so talk us through Jordan Henderson. <laughs> I definitely don't. I cannot stand that league. But, yeah, he's like we said the other week, he wanted to come back to the Premier League. All the Premier League's like, no, you're old. You're done. We don't want you. Uh, but Ajax, I'm wearing the Ajax kit right now. Actually, I love their kits. Uh, yeah, they're looking at going going for him. I don't mind that. They probably need a bit of a, an old head there. I, I need to check where they are in the Eredivisie. Arid, Arid uh, whereabouts are they? I think they'd be sixth or something like that. This is their worst run they're they've not had. Doing in, well. This is their worst run they've had in about five seasons, six seasons. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, they're usually top of the table or top two. So I don't, I don't mind that move for Ajax. I feel like it's just a little bit uh, lesser standard, obviously, than the Premier League. So Henderson going there. Yeah, don't mind it. Definitely not ready for Premier League again, Henderson. So he can he can get stuffed. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely experience needed there at Ajax. And Jordan Henderson has that in abundance, doesn't he? Mm, um, absolutely. But other news out of Saudi Arabia, Benzema once he yeah. out of Saudi Arabia. didn't didn't come back after New Year's to the club, so he was left <laughs> out of the squad. He was um, a few beers. <laughs> no surprises there. He's still getting his, his salary. Um, <laughs> but apparently, of course, this was just. I'm not sure how true this is, but there's rumours Premier League clubs interested, like Chelsea, who need strikers and other clubs. So, who knows? I don't know yeah. where we're getting that money from Chelsea. This this is why it's yeah. even more well, it's dodgy. A, it's that, a loan oh. stats guy, so that's not too bad. Uh, sure, and bad. it wouldn't be a transfer window without Arsenal having been linked to Benzema somehow, even though he's never <laughs> going to come there. Uh, <laughs> Manchester United youngster Hannibal went out on loan to Sevilla and there's an option to buy him there. Every chance he may end up staying there because he's only gotten a couple of uh, games and not many starts under Eric Ten Hag. Full of talent. A lot of hair, uh, but can can play and probably a good sign, uh, good signing for Sevilla and probably going forward there as well. Yeah, he's, he showed a few signs of a guy that, yeah, can definitely improve and maybe he just needs a bit of time away and then he might be able to come back in the future because he got, I'm just having a look, he got a goal earlier in the season for Man U, still a young guy. So, yeah, I feel like that's a that's a good move for him. Sevilla is a good, good team. So, yeah, don't mind it. Nope. Good stuff, Marcus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got absolutely like, nothing out. I thought he was going to come oh. in there with something. <laughs> That's no, right. I'll, 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 I'll come in with something. Uh, his his hairdo is pretty good. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, nice, nice. Oh, we'll move we'll move on to the final one. Seeing as I'll segue this uh, apparently, <laughs> uh, Bruno Guimaraes, uh links to PSG. He was in Paris yesterday. Um, but unfortunately, I'm sorry to break your hearts, guys, but that is fake news. He was in oh. Paris, but it's got nothing to do with... It's pure coincidence. Uh, so I know There's how no much you want to... There's no thing as a coincidence, Fabrizio. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know how much you want to you wanna see uh, Bruno Guimaraes out of the Premier League, but yeah. Fabrizio has come out and said that fake news coincidence. The, the quicker he yes. goes to the Premier League, the uh, quicker he's not breaking our favourite player's legs. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, if it's fake news, he's probably going to stay in Newcastle then, isn't he? Well, they need the money and PSG seemingly always have money. But anyway, let's get a look at to the Asian Cup, sort of looking ahead to some games that are coming up. More, most importantly, the Australians take on Syria this Thursday. Saudi Arabia get their tournament uh, underway against Oman tomorrow morning. So it'll be Wednesday morning. Uh, main games, Iraq and Japan is on Friday night as well. They're probably sort of the main games coming up in the next few days. Yeah, it was good that uh, Syria and Uzbekistan in our group, their opening match was a nil-all draw. That's handy for Australia. So if we get another win, we can yeah, jump a few wins above and and uh, yeah be easily the best team in that group. So we just got to beat Syria here. Same sort of vibe as India. I think Syria is obviously a better side than India, but we just need to just finish our chances a bit better. Hopefully another 2-0 win and yeah, we're on our way. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll quickly touch on the African Cup of Nations as well. Um, Morocco yep. are playing on Thursday as well. Uh, so that'll be a great watch after their brilliant World Cup performance. Uh, yep. They play Tanzania and then Ivory Coast, Nigeria on Friday. That should be an excellent Ooh. game in the group stage. Mm. Yeah, nice. That'd be Don't really All right, that is the Tuesday show done and dusted this week here on Football Today. We'll be back later in the week to take a look at the remaining games this weekend in the EPL, as well as uh, we could potentially touch on what's going on at the Asian Cup, the African Cup of Nations, and if any transfer news has happened as well. But we are done and dusted. Thanks for not coming into the office, all of you. You are welcome. No worries. Uh, anyway, thanks to Gerald for producing. Uh, the computer's made it through the episode here. Thanks to me for being here in my awesome Arsenal Stella McCartney kit. Uh, make sure to check us out on the social medias at Football Today Pod on TikTok, Instagram, X, Facebook, wherever else we are as well. Please give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I'm going to keep yelling about that into the ether because those five star ratings really do help us out, uh, as well as move us up the charts on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. But make sure you do get around those social medias. We're going to have a, be having a bunch of fun on those over the upcoming weeks and months. But I think we are done and dusted. So. Boys, I'll see you in the office tomorrow. We'll catch you next week on Football Today.